You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on Nerd to Know Basis. Um, I am joined here on the line by Mr. Mike Wells, Twitter <laughs> Fallen City Brawls. Uh, Mike, when when I found out that this was a, a concept that was happening, I had to get you on because I'm a huge fan of uh, of Streets of Rage and of Final Fight. So you know the fact yeah. that someone in 2019 is looking to make a game based on that. Talk to me uh, a little bit about how how this came came about. Yeah, well, you know, I I also love both of those games. Um, I I grew up uh, Mega Drive, so. The Streets of Rage series, particularly, I played a huge amount um, when I was younger. So um, that kind of becomes like part of your DNA, you know. Um, before the Streets of Rage, I guess, uh, um, going way back, you used to have a Spectrum back in the day. So um, there was a game, I don't know if you remember, a game called uh, Target Renegade. No, it's a little, um, little bit before my time. It was, it was really cool. It was it was like a, um, a precursor to kind of Streets of Rage, you know, the same kind of style. Um, right. It was really cool. Um, but Streets of Rage came, um, obviously Final Fight as well. Um, and yeah, I just love those games. I, I've, I've kind of always um, kind of tried to kind of code, uh, tried to create games, uh, create some kind of small things, nothing um, for release. Um, commercially but for for this kind of project uh, you know i decided this is these these are the games that i most enjoy playing you know this is something something great about the kind of um the flow that you can get into playing a, a really good scrolling beat em up um and i thought you know this is this is what i want to really focus on this is what i, I want to really develop and, and yeah i mean the, the timing is interesting because you know it's been what 20 25 years uh since uh, the last Streets of Rage game, for example. Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, um, there's, there's been a bit of a gap in the market. Obviously, this year, <laughs> we've got the release of, um, or maybe next year, we've got the release of Streets of Rage 4 coming. So yes. I think this type of game is a little bit more in people's people's minds than maybe it has been for a while now. Um, but that's cool, you know. Um, there's a lot of people enjoying this kind of game. And, and you know, I'm just really, I'm really enjoying, really enjoying the process of... Um, of making it so so yeah. so I I I I won't uh, I I won't get too technical with you, but I kind of have to a little bit. Um, yeah. uh, what <laughs> what are you uh, what are you coding the game in? Are you using any particular engine or because yeah. I'm looking I'm looking at some of the gifts you have up on the site fallencitybrawl.com and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Thank you. Well, that's really cool. It's um, you know, it's still it's still work in progress. Um, there's still work to be done. Um, but thank you. It's 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 coming on. I'm using um, Game Maker Studio too, right. um, from Yo Yo Games, mm-hmm. and it's it's really cool. It's um, it's quite easy to get started with, but it's got a lot of depth. You know, you can you can take it as far as 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 you need to. You know, in terms of the 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 kind of flexibility of of the engine. So. Um, so yeah, so it's it's um, Game Maker Studio two, um, and for the for the actual sprite work, um, Game Maker's got a it's kind of got a sprite editor built in, but I, I tend to use Ace Sprite, uh, which is a kind of pixel art two uh, D pixel art um, software package, which again it's, it's it's a really good tool. It's pretty pretty easy to use, um, and it's kind of um, it's enjoyable to use, you know. So yeah, I, I, I enjoy the pixel art inside um, as much as I enjoy the code inside, really. So yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, I, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of coming. It's starting to take shape, you know. For sure. Like the the one thing I will have to say, um, the pixel art art itself, uh, the sixteen bit look is it is beautiful. Um, like it's timeless, you know, and it, you really yeah. capture that spirit. So fair play. No, thank you. It's it's um. It's like, yeah, it's a style that I kind of grew up with. And I think, um, you know, back when you, you kind of, the Mega Drive, the SNES, but I think also if you look at uh, like the Neo Geo, I think probably the Neo Geo for me was like a, a pinnacle um, of kind of sprite work, of 2D sprite work. And, 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 you know, there's some awesome stuff released today as well, you know, but I think in terms of 
be able to get the most out of the, the technology of, of the time. I think the Neo Geo system was just just awesome. So that's the kind of I'm aiming for that kind of 16-bit, 32-bit kind of pixel art um, look. But there's just something about pixels, like you say, it's kind of timeless. Mm. Um, and you know, we've got the luxury now, I guess, of having the technology that kind of gets around some of the issues that developers would have had in the past, you know. Yeah, they had the job, I guess, in terms of the memory limitations and the yeah. kind of colour palette limitations and things like that, that, that we don't really have those kind of boundaries, um, except for where you kind of set them yourselves in terms of things like palettes and stuff. But, yeah, so it's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pleasure kind of working with, with those kind of, um, with, with pixels and, and creating that, so. Right. Cheers. And and just on the actual um, development side itself, um, the website you've been working on this for eighteen months. Talk, yeah. talk to me a little bit how about how the the actual concept goes from right. I want to do this. Then <laughs> walking through it. So how does, yeah, that, how does um, that happen? It started off pretty small. So um, I followed a couple of um, tutorials, right. which were. Basically, um, I think the best way to learn anything in terms of coding and developing is by kind of looking at either kind of examples that have been created or kind of following through tutorials and then tweaking and changing what you've got. So I looked at a few tutorials around um, different types of game, kind of developing using um, Game Maker. Um, and then I, I basically kind of started by looking at just the basics of getting a character in place, um, getting that character moving around, um, then looking at adding the kind of animation I need for the kind of uh, the walking. You know, the walking animation is the toughest part of all of it for me, getting the walking kind of right. And I, I still got work to do on this for some of the characters. I really like it but though. The, I have to say, one of the things that I really like, I, I really like the walking animation. It's awesome. It's, 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 um, it's been a few, um, there's been a few kind of different iterations of it, you know, it's because um, it's such an important thing. Yeah. With, a, with a scrolling beat em up, you're always watching the guy kind of walk around. That's true. Kind of throwing pushes, kicking, but it's, so he's got a look kind of like he's, um, or she's kind of means business, you know. So um, the, the walking animation's got to be good. And um, j- just from there, then as well, uh, how 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 vast do you want to make this? Because like, yeah, when you go back and you play Streets of Rage or Final Fight, like I can I can get through Final Fight on t- three quarter on three euros. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, that's how good I am at Final Fight. Not great, but not terrible. Street to Rage, yeah, it's a bit more of a challenge. Uh, still, how, yeah. how 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 broad are you looking to make this, or what's the what should we expect if we sit down and pop this in the the, the Steam or whatever? How, how long yeah. is it gonna be? Yeah, it's, it's funny you say that about Final Fight because I, I struggle with Final Fight. I find oh, yeah? it difficult. I, the first time I played Final Fight was in the arcade, and I I put in like I don't know what it was when I played it, maybe like 50p or something, and I got whooped you know, in the first stage. Um, I've got better since I had it on my um, PlayStation 3 Final Fight um, on one of the Capcom kind of releases on the PlayStation Store, I think. But um, so I'm better at the kind of Streets of Rage probably than the Final Fight. But with uh, Fallen City Brawl, it's going to be, I'm thinking kind of eight stages, um, but with multiple routes through the stages. So right. there'll be some kind of choice of routes as you go through. And those stages will also be pretty f- flexible. So I'm wanting to build in things like um, breakable kind of floors, breakable walls. So it kind of expands the, the area of the, of the fight, basically, as you kind of go through. Um, I want it to be um, I want it to be quite tough, um, but it's going to be accessible, you know. So it'll be a kind of game where there's there's a lot of depth if people want to kind of um, get really good at it, basically. Uh, and I think people will, you know. So um, it will the depth will be there in terms of things like kind of mastering the counter moves, uh, mastering some of the um, kind of more in depth combos, stuff like that. So yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be pretty intense. So. Right. Uh, and as far as the team, is it just yourself? Yeah, that's right. In terms of the development, um, it's been just myself up to now. Um, I've recently um, been talking with um, a really talented guy who um, is going to help me with the, the sound on the game. So a guy called Daniel uh, Lindholm, who's um, got credits for um, Street Fighter V Arcade Edition, wow. um, and also uh, Resident Evil 6 as well. 
Um, so, so yeah, I'm really excited to be to be working uh, with Daniel on the, the kind of um, the soundtrack for the trailer of the game, right? Uh, um, which is going to be awesome, and hopefully more from there as well. And uh, is there is there any kind of release date in mind? Is there a roadmap? Is there any way we can? Is that still a bit out in the distance, or what are you looking? Yeah, it's a little bit. I haven't confirmed the release date yet. Um, what I don't want to do is set a release date and then kind of find out I need to push it back. You know, I want to be kind of transparent about where I'm up to, which is we're still fairly early on in the development. Of, right. um, but there's there's a lot in place now, so I'm able to start kind of planning that a little bit more. I, what I would like is for this to kind of be released probably the first half of, of next year. So we're okay. thinking kind of within the next 12 months, um, I would I would hope that will be kind of approaching release. That's my aim, um, but I haven't kind of set that date yet. And what kind of platforms are you looking to do? Or is it going to be, are you going to aim for like a Steam release or are you going to try to go yeah. old school? Or? Yeah, I think this... I think the Steam release, uh, certainly a PC release, I expect that I'll be looking at kind of Steam um, there. I think um, in terms of consoles, it'd be great to be able to release this on current consoles as well. Um, so um, I, I play a lot of PlayStation 4 myself, and it'd be awesome to, to be able to play this um, obviously on, on PS4, but I think looking at kind of Switch and Xbox as well. Um, so. Haven't confirmed. Haven't confirmed the um, kind of formats as yet, but um, I think PC is definite, and then the plan is also console releases as well. There's processes to go through with the platform holders for each of those, so I can't kind of guarantee that until obviously I've, I've kind of approached those processes. But that's that's what I would like, um, and there's some kind of logistics in terms of kind of capacity to be able to um, kind of release at different times all kind of simultaneously but I need to kind of have those discussions and work that out really yeah so. yeah for sure for sure for sure um, it, it, I don't know what have you thought about the as, as a developer of someone making a retro or a near retro game what do you think about the, the kind <laughs> sorry, of sorry uh, sorry um, just as a as a developer of somebody who's making neo retro games what do you think about the, that kind of revival now we're going to start with the binding of Isaac and now it's it's all the rage with Shovel Knight and stuff like that, and then Cuphead. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think it's great that the the kind of market has opened up to people that, you know, have got good ideas, have got, um, are willing to put the kind of, um, some, some really talented people that are making some great games that are getting the kind of recognition that I think they, they deserve, you know? Um, and I think, you know, I think, Triple A games, you know, can be fantastic. Um, I've been playing um, Titanfall 2 recently. Um, it's not always some of the newest of games, but I, it's a kind of example, I guess, of a big budget game that is just pretty awesome, I think. But what can be equally um, good is where you have, you know, quite, what can be quite a small project, but, you know, some fantastic ideas and um, some fantastic kind of um, atmosphere, I think, is, is something that, can really come through with uh, with indie games, um, and you can you can kind of see the passion that you know some really talented developers put into their games, and so it's great that there's that kind of success that kind of can come with that for where you've got that kind of talent. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. I think yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a brilliant thing. You know, it's interesting looking at um, you've probably seen the news of the Google um, Google's kind of yes move into the into the kind of um, streaming mm. of games and I, I don't really know how that might affect kind of developers um, I think I, I guess with the kind of I don't know the, like the might of Google behind that kind of project I'm guessing it potentially opens up the market further and potentially gives people opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have had but um, I don't know we'll have to see how that pans out but but yeah there's some fantastic indie games and you know it's, uh, it's some great stuff out there and obviously this is your passion project and something you're kind of doing on the side. Would, would you consider something like Patreon or some kind of something along that? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. What I need to look at kind of funding of this game. I'm, I'm some way um, into development, but I think there's going to be things that, you know, um, I mentioned kind of the music, but there's other areas that I'm not an expert on. And, that you know, there's there's people that are more talented than me that could bring a lot to the project. Mm. So I am interested in looking at 
kind of funding for the game because it's obviously been self-funded to this point. Yeah. Um, there's different there's different ways of doing that, I guess. There's things like Patreon um, or Kickstarter. Um, I'm looking into those kind of things at the moment. Um, and there's, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that, that there's people that are really, I guess, passionate about the project. Um, and so I think it'd be great to be able to say, well, look, this is, this is a way that, you know, people can support the project. Um, but I'm just not quite sure about how that'll look yet. Um, but I need to kind of research that a little bit more. But yeah, I think there's a certain potential for it. I, I, you know what? I, I've seen worse things being funded on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. It's um, thank you. It's, it's. I hope that I'll be able to look at that because I think it, in terms of kind of creating what I'm looking to create, that would yeah. be really cool to be able to to help get there. You know, um, like I say, there's, there's certain things that I can do myself, and certain things that to do a really good job, it's going to need to get some kind of people that are more specialists. So things like. Sure. like um, I enjoy kind of the pixel art side, but if you give me kind of a pen and a red paintbrush, I'm no good with that. So if I'm looking at kind of um, artwork, for example, for say in future, if I wanted to do a kind of physical release of the game, mm. it'd be really great to have some really cool artwork associated with that, you know, like yeah. an instruction book with some kind of great designs and things like that. And, you know, that isn't, that isn't one of my talents. So I need to be looking at kind of, um, funding something for that so, well, so yeah, yeah so that like would be good. one of the coolest things i've seen recently is the sonic mania release and they actually yeah. released it on a physical mega drive uh it was like a fold i think but it was like a physical mega drive cart and i'm okay. like man that's cool <laughs> you know? that's not really awesome you know what i, I like sonic i love sonic mania um this occasionally on my twitter i've um i've uploaded like um screenshots and things of sonic mania it's that kind of game that I kind of go to just because it's so just quick to get into you know you can have 10 minute go on it here and there um I tend to kind of go into Sonic Mania on the, on the PlayStation and, and play a bit um but I think it's a really good example of a of a game with kind of pixel art that's mm. done so well you know they, they it, it's got a real retro feel to it but it's yeah. bang up to date as well you know it, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel too retro it feels uh it feels it feels new you know despite having that kind of aesthetic so yeah, love Sonic Mania. I didn't know there was the um, yeah that kind of uh, recreation of it, so that's really cool. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm a huge Mega Drive fan. I literally have one still connected up, and I have another two in a box. Awesome. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's great. <laughs> to talk. What do you play on it? What do you play on it? I st- oh well, I st- literally play Street or Street or Rage. Um, yeah. Big fan of Kid Chameleon. Kid Chameleon is oh, yeah, my go-to yeah. my go-to game when when I'm bored. Uh, I go through Sonic's and <laughs> then Robocop versus Terminator is always a fun time. Oh, that's a great game. Do you know what? Technically, as well, that's so far ahead of its time when it was released. Um, just like huge sprites, um, yeah. really, really great visuals. Um, actually, yeah, I really actually, enjoyed that game. The street background for some of the stuff that you're using kind of reminds me of Robocop vs Terminator. Actually, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of like uh, it's that kind of dystopian future kind of look that I'm trying yeah. to get a little bit as well. You know, where it's. Um, yeah, atmosphere. I'm trying to get whenever I do a kind of background of, to the gate. It's trying to get the atmosphere right. It's so important. There's something about how it's lit. And, yeah, um, it, you, def- yeah. you definitely have I'm that. Sure. Definitely have that atmosphere. You know, and I think like you know, uh, I can just. I, I'm actually really excited about the project. Fanboying a bit. Uh, really excited about the project. <laughs> uh, so I can just imagine when it's there with the music and stuff like that as well. I think you're on to a winner, Mike. Thank you. There's, um, I, I'm really hoping that, that people enjoy it. You know, it's, um, I'm enjoying making it. There's, there's some cool things I'm looking to put in there. I'm trying to, um, I'm working on a, a wolf. You might have seen one of the, um, yeah. one of the videos with the wolf in there. He's going to be like a kind of sidekick. I'm trying to create it so that the player kind of really builds like a relationship with this wolf. It's going to be a bit like, did you ever see, um, K9, um, or, Turner and Hooch, where you've got like the, the kind of uh, cop with the police dog and they kind of hate each other at the beginning and then right. they kind of build this bond, you know, where they kind of save each other's lives and stuff. So I'm hoping that um, the kind of same kind of thing can happen with this wolf. So this wolf's going to just be awesome. He's going to like just tear into the bad guys, um, but okay. you'll be able to kind of train him between stages and stuff like that. So you'll be able to like work on his kind of um, like how obedient he is. So if you kind of ask him to attack if you kind of command him to attack you kind of do it oh very cool effectively if you've kind of trained him things like that so and 
and in in the in some of the shots there, you have a car with two lads getting out with Kalashnikovs. Is, yeah. is that kind of uh, similar to the Streets of Rage thing, where you push a button and they kind of back you up? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's borrowed pretty heavily from my idea. Right. Um, That's a I think, um, it, yeah, I think if you look at the Streets of Age series, I think, um, you know, it's an awesome set of games. Um, but I think what they lose in the um, second one onwards is having that kind of police backup where you press that button and, um, and they come and zoom onto the screen and um, just unleash hell, you know. So um, I, I like that idea, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So. Uh, yeah, so the, so the guys will come into the onto the screen and kind of slide in in the car and then yeah get out with the kind of um, weapons and stuff. I, I want that to be um, you to be able to kind of build that up though. Did you, did you ever play Golden Axe? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so in Golden Axe you collect the uh, the magic um, potions from those little elf guys. Mm. Um, and you can build up the special powers that the character has right up to. So I think if you were like um, Tyrus Flair, the Amazon kind of warrior, she if you had like a full magic gauge, it would go like a, like a minimum magic gauge would be just some kind of small fires going on on the stage. But the maximum would be like this huge dragon just swooping in and, and burning everything. And so I wanted a kind of similar... Um, kind of system with this so like early on um like the car kind of coming in with two guys in it will be one of the earlier on kind of specials but if you build it up if you build up that gauge um you're going to be getting into kind of things like something i'm working on at the moment which is like a russian kind of gunship like a high and d gunship um kind of coming on and just obliterating everything so you're going to be able to kind of really build up that that kind of uh, special attack um and yeah so if you save it up longer you're going to Get a better, um, better attack out of it, so there'll be a little bit of strategy with that as well. Oh, that sounds fantastic, man! It's uh, it's very unique. It's one of the most unique uh, takes on the genre I've seen. And obviously, you know there is that kind of gap in the market. Street to Rage Four is coming out next year, but you, know, you got some time. And I definitely think with the, yeah. with with the era in now, it's you know yeah, it, it, it it's interesting with Street to Rage Four, you know, because I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be it'll be great. Um, so it's got a different look, I guess. They've gone for quite um, a more modern look, I guess, um, or in terms of maybe not modern, but um, yeah, kind of cell shaded kind of look, um, which looks looks great. But I, obviously, I'm more of a fan of the pixel art myself. Um, but I think they'll, they'll end up being quite different games, really. So they're both scrolling and beating most. But I think what I'm trying to do is something a little bit different. Um, and, you know, so yeah, I'm hoping people will like both, you know, so. Okay. Yeah, well, look, I, uh, you know, if if people want to get in touch with you, I would, um, I would urge them to go over to fallencitybrawl.com, check out the amazing artwork, have a look there. It's, uh, it, it, you know, even though it's early in development, it's definitely something that has a lot of legs. I'm looking forward to seeing what's, what's coming down the pipeline. But if you want to get um, in touch with you directly, Mike, how are you able to do that? Yeah, um, I'm pretty active on um, Twitter, so. Um, Twitter's probably the best place. Um, I'm there at Fallen City Brawl. Um, so people can catch up um, there. Um, also on Instagram. So that's Fallen City Brawl on Instagram as well. Um, but yeah, Twitter's probably the best way. Um, also through, through the website, there's, um, there's a newsletter that um, I've set up. And the idea is that I send people the newsletter and that's got the kind of latest stuff in there. So the latest screenshots, latest videos for people that have signed up for the newsletter. It's free. Um, just kind of on the website, you can put in an email address and I'll ping you the kind of newsletter every kind of few weeks, basically. Um, so so people have found that pretty cool as well. But yeah, Twitter's probably the easiest place to get me um, at Fallen City Brawl. All right, very cool, man. And you know, um... I'll be keeping an eye on the project. Uh, thanks very much for much coming on. Hopefully, we'll have you on in the future. You're more obviously more than welcome. I've really enjoyed this. Thanks so much. That'd be, that'd be really good. Look, it's been great being on, and thank you for inviting me. It's been um, it's been really cool. All right. Okay, guys, uh, stay tuned to uh, Nerd No Basin. We'll talk to you after this. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. 